So they will be replacing the control board on the FX 3648 inverter by Outback. Uh, this is a very solid inverter, however it was damaged by lightning. For this job we'll need some basic tools. We have a 4mm hex wrench, number 2 Phillips screwdriver, we have a long nose bird beak pliers, two 10mm wrenches and a 10mm socket. So let's go ahead and remove the plate cover. So we'll start by removing all our covers. Be sure to store all the parts that you remove from the inverter. Terminal covers, air filter, some battery terminal nuts here. So now we'll remove the battery terminal nuts. You might need a rubber grip for this. Sometimes they can be a little bit hard to get off. Okay, next you'll need your screwdriver. You have six screws here that you gotta remove. And once you remove these, then you'll be able to remove the upper chassis of the inverter. Here's where your bird beak pliers come in handy. So we've removed our six screws. Next we'll remove these eight screws. We have two in each of the four corners of the inverter. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those using our four millimeter Allen key. Once you've removed these eight screws, then the chassis will be free. You'll be able to lift the upper chassis from the lower chassis. Now, a very, very important note, your fan here is still connected to the FET board on the lower chassis, so you'll have a cord in between. So you wanna be careful to lift this very slowly all right, so you wanna be very careful when you're lifting the upper chassis off the lower chassis. As you can see, the fan is still connected to the board. This comes off quite easily. You just simply pinch it, slides right out. And you've successfully removed the upper chassis and you have the entire unit exposed now. Here's our control board that we'll be replacing today. These two are connected, this is our AC board. So you wanna be careful when removing them. There are three gaskets that you wanna remove. You have two O-ring gaskets right here. You have another big gasket that goes right around the unit. Um, you just wanna remove them so you don't get them lost so that when you're reassembling the unit, you know, you'll, you'll know where to find them. Next thing you're gonna do is grab your two 10 millimeter wrenches and we're gonna loose, uh, remove this bolt to kind of free up the idle kit. Okay, so we just removed the nut and bolt it carries two flat washer and a lock washer as well. 
right between these six capacitors and the actual lower chassis you'll see a bolt right there we're gonna go ahead and remove that bolt for this you'll need a 10 millimeter socket with an extension nose pliers and go ahead and remove that so next we remove the ribbon cable connecting the FET board to the control board just lift these tabs you have one at the top one at the bottom and it should slide out quite easily there you go do the same thing on the other side. There's a green wire that's plugged in. If you have a vented unit directly below the ribbon cable, you want to go ahead and remove that. kind of get that out of the way and now we'll be able to lift our FET board from the entire unit quite easily there you go okay so now that our FET board is out we're gonna have to remove this ribbon cable here that connects the AC board to your control board also called your computer board and that's pretty easy you just lift the tab at the bottom got one at the bottom here got another one here at the top and just like that comes right out okay so go ahead and remove that so now our boards will be free to be lifted out. First you lift your AC board, it kind of free up the space for the control board. All right, so here we have our new board from Outback. They ship this out to us quick and fast. Comes with a new ribbon and all sealed in plastic. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in. So here's our new board. And we're just gonna slide this right back in. But before I slide that in, uh, just wanna show you how easy it would be to replace just about any other board on the unit so only thing left on the entire inverter is the AC board and the only thing that's holding the AC board in the chassis right now are these two wires from the transformer so once you wiggle these off pull them off then this board would be free and you could replace this board just as easily okay so we're gonna go ahead and leave this in because there's no need. Uh, we're gonna, this board is quite fine. So we're just replacing the control board. So we're just gonna go ahead and slide in the new board and put our ribbons back on and we should be up and running. Now, if you look inside the chassis, you'll see there are some slots that's built in. So this is where the boards slide right in and they'll be quite secure once they go in there's no shaking proof and slide it back down sits nice and comfortable and we just go ahead and slide in our AC board now there's a lip right here as you can see, there's a slot. There's a little lip that hangs over. So you want this to fit right back in place. Like so. So 
so you want it to sit right in that space it has a slot so it fits nice and snug back in and uh, be careful not to pinch your transformer wires down here either that will short circuit the whole unit don't want that so right now we just replaced the control board so only thing left to do is we're gonna put in our new ribbons and reassemble this bad boy and we'll be up and running quick note you want this red line that's on the ribbon to be facing down if you notice towards the floor as you slide the new ribbon cable in you see it automatically locks you just gotta make sure it clicks and voila it's in let's go ahead and slide our FET board right back into place As you can see slides right into that slot right there just want to make sure everything is nice and snug see that 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 bolt I'm gonna put that bolt back in so everything lines back up ribbon back in this tape was from the factory go ahead and tape that back in order to get this green wire back in you might have to lift the fet board just a little bit slide it in got both our bolts in place we have bolt number one and bolt number two so now our boards are secured back onto the lower chassis so we've just completed replacing the board and now we're gonna test it so we have our 48 volt power supply all right, bro, let's go ahead and flip that breaker. Thank you, sir. One. All right. So we have power. So that's our error light. Our error light is flashing. However, that should go, that should go off in just a little bit. Now that we have successfully replaced the control board, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the unit. So the first thing we'll do is to reconnect the fan. And we just go ahead and plug that back in. Once that's done, I'm gonna put the upper chassis back on the lower chassis. Be very careful as we reattach the upper chassis onto the lower chassis so now we're just gonna bolt our chassis back on upper chassis and we have eight screws You want to get these nice and tight. This is actually the FET board. This holds the FET board in place. So there's absolutely no movement inside the inverter. Next, we're going to secure the AC board. Carries six screws. 
I need your bird beak for this. Get them in place. These screws are very important because they secure the AC board onto the chassis. Our terminal caps. Positive, negative. And finally, cover plate. That concludes today's video, guys. So please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so as yet. Hit the notification bell so you'll know whenever we upload new content. Thanks again for watching. One love.